Ahava and blessings. Welcome to this episode of Hold the Shahina. I am your host. My name is Arya. I am a Reiki master, Magdalene priestess, energy, and sound alchemist. And I am your host. And this podcast is designed and channeled and being offered to support us in our collective ascension, awakening, in fully embodying, integrating, and remembering our true essence. And our true essence is that we are light, we are soul, we are love, we are infinite, and we have the capacity to transform and transmute any circumstance we wish and live a reality that an experience that we desire that is more in alignment with our soul so in that welcome back for those who are new and those who well welcome back for those who have been tuning in and welcome to those who are new Thank you for tuning in. So this episode is dedicated and um, to what's going on with these new moon energies. And there's a lot of chaos in the world. There's a lot of destruction. There's a lot of harm. There's a lot of suffering. There's a lot of pain. If you are intuitive, empathic like I am, you are feeling the pain in the collective. And this is a perfect time to really come back home to the basics and the basics are that we determine our frequency we are the ones who control our our reality based on how we respond how we react and this new moon is happening at 21 degrees 7 of libra and libra is the sign of the collective of the we Libra is about justice, about balance, harmony, beauty, truth. These are the qualities of Libra. Libra is incredibly diplomatic. Libra is the peacemaker. Aries are opposing sign of Libra is the complete opposite. It is the sign of the warrior. Um, and if it's in the light, in outside of the egoic restraints of Aries, if it is operating at the higher octave, it is the spiritual warrior. Um, if it is operating in the ego, it is individualistic. It is all about that person, that that being. It is. It can be controlling. It can be very um, warlike because, of course, Aries is ruled by Mars. So right now we have the sun and the moon conjunct in Libra and we have an eclipse that is happening as well so eclipses are harbingers of major change of transformation of quick sudden movements and it's I mean this is all happening in the ninth house so this is this is a very powerful time we as a collective humanity can choose to continue to create based on divisiveness, based on choosing sides and making judgments, or we can choose to be in our heart space, to be in a space where we feel empowered. Because what we need to understand is that if one is ruled by our fear, our lack, our ego, our need to be right, if we are ruled by these lower frequencies, all we will create is more separation, more disunity, more disharmony, more dis-ease, whether it's in your physical body or whether it is in the collective. We can only create more disharmony and disunity when we operate from those lower frequencies. If you choose to be in your heart center, no matter how painful that may be, choose to basically rise above the circumstance and not 
not choose a side, not choose, well, this is the one way that things have to be. Because some of us are very experienced at this. We know, well, if I do this, then this was going to happen. And we kind of get sucked in to the way that we've been doing this, the way that we've been programmed. However, we are moving beyond what we have been programmed to do. We are dismantling and dis we are dismantling the illusions and delusions that we have been led to believe is our truth. Our truth is that we are love. And when we see other beings operating from a place that is not love, you know that they are disconnected from source. They are disconnected from God, goddess, Allah, whatever you call that frequency. They are disconnecting themselves from their infinite power. So they can only create more terror, more fear, more lack, more injustice. That can only be, that's the only thing that can be created from those lower frequencies. From the frequency of the heart, from the frequency of seeing everything as part of the universal consciousness, seeing everything and everyone as your mirror. From that perspective, we can choose peace. We can choose abundance. We can choose to be in love. We can choose to be in gratitude. We can effectuate a profound transformation in the subconscious workings of the collective consciousness because we are all interconnected. We have all consciously, no, well, not consciously in many ways, we've all, we've all contributed to our current state of affairs. And this isn't a judgment. This is simply what it is. We've contributed to this. The question before us at this time is, do we wish to continue to perpetuate disharmony, disunity, pain, loss, suffering, strife, war, grief? Are these frequencies that we wish to keep perpetuating? Because it really is up to us. And it's up to us in how we respond in our hearts and how we respond with the people around us and how we treat one another. Everything is up to us. This is a very powerful time for not just prayer, but to really see where are we in disharmony and disunity within ourselves. Because the external, as above, so below, as within, so without. This is a hermetic principle. Everything that is external has been, is internal. Like there is no separation we, we see things as being separate. We see one another as being separate beings, but we're not. We are all one. So the numerology of this moon is three, and three is ruled by Saturn. Saturn is the taskmaster. Sa Saturn is the one that brings us the lessons. Are we learning those lessons? And of course, it's the trinity, communication, creativity, infinite possibilities, Every moment we are creating, it is the what is called the masculine mind, the yang mind. And it is about sharing our gifts. It is an activation. So what are we activating? So during my trip, um, I, I was... Um, I was being initiated by the Black Madonna and the Divine Feminine. And the Black Madonna is, it's the season we're going into because, you know, we're going into that hibernation phase. We're going into that taking stock of what, of what we've created. Like that's what, that's the season we're going into in the Northern Hemisphere. We're going into the shadow, but the Black Madonna is not a shadow energy. She is the energy of the void of 
creation. She is the energy that is not only the cosmic void, but she is the, the earthly mother. She is also the fierce mother, the mother that is protective and the stern mother, the one that gives you the lessons. So are we learning from our past mistakes as a collective individually? Are we taking stock of our lives and of where we're at from a place of neutrality, from a place of not judging our current circumstances, but do we wish to create more of what we have? And yes, there are some aspects of our lives at this point that we wish to create more of. Um, And You know, I've had a wonderful time and been blessed to be traveling to these wonderful um, sacred sites um, in Europe, and it's been very transformative and completely changed, like completely changing my entire perspective. And it and every part of it was an initiation. Every part of it was being birthed again and again through the birth canal of of the cosmic void the cosmic womb like being rebirthed and stripped open and seen okay what is working what is not am i fulfilling my mission is this really my mission asking myself what what is my purpose am i aligning with my purpose every moment am i sharing my gifts am i am i doing the work i came here to do like, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? All of these like were laid out in front of me and every time the confirmation came back. And sometimes you go on retreats, spiritual retreats, and they are complete dark nights of the soul. And other times it's just full of activations and full of, okay, some tests or, or a lot of tests. And the tests are... So you can prove to yourself what you are made of when you surrender yourself to your purpose, to your mission, to your soul. When you surrender the ego, the programs, the the karmas, the patterns, the limiting beliefs, all of it. When you surrender all of it, it on the altar of the divine, on the altar of your soul, because your soul is the divine, all is one, one is all, we are this infinite oneness. That's when you can show and prove to yourself who you are. What are you made of? And are you really here living your purpose, living your mission and supporting yourself and those around you to awaken And sometimes it's having a conversation you don't want to have. Sometimes it's just pointing out, look, people can't like, not every expression of humanity is going to be palatable to every individual. And some people are incredibly judgmental. It's like they they don't like to see too much emotion or too much of anything because it's, you know, it it shows them an imbalance in themselves. But if we are going to create this new earth, if we, if we really are committed to this fifth dimensional oneness, unity consciousness, bringing that down, anchoring that on earth, then we need to unite the polarities within us. We need to stop judging. We need to stop taking sides. We need to stop looking outside of ourselves and pointing out like that's the problem no the problem is within until you address the problems within we are going to continue the same karmic cycles whether it's in relationships whether it is in our work situations whether it is in our family dynamics whether it is in our friendships with no matter what the relationship is if we do not transform the heart, we 
the external is still going to be the same, whether it is money, whether it is resources, whether it is whatever it is that we are struggling with or that we are seeking to transform, the more that we judge it as wrong, as not being good enough, as what, the more we judge it, period, doesn't matter how you judge it, the more that you are creating a separation between you and the abundance, the love, the success, the fill in the blank, the more that you're creating more of that. And this is the moon. This is the lunation to bring ourselves into divine union, bring those opposing aspects within you, whatever it is that we are seeking to transform bringing it close to our heart, uniting with it. Stop fighting. Like stop, stop fighting within yourself. Like sometimes we see a lack of abundance in our lives and we, we think that, okay, well, if I do more, if I take the, on this other job, if I, you know, we strategize in our head how to resolve that. What we're not doing is looking within to see where we ourselves feel that we are not enough. Where do we feel that we are not abundant? Where do we feel that we are not good enough? Where do we have this lack programming within? It could be in love. It could be in money. It could be in our family relationships. It doesn't matter where this lack programming is showing up because the thing is, wherever the lack programming shows up, that's not necessarily the area that it's going to manifest outwardly. You may have a lack, an inability to form lasting, healthy, romantic relationships, but your lack has to do with your family situation in, in your heart. You don't have enough love in your family dynamics. So it manifests externally as not love, not love in, in your relationships, romantic relationships. So it's, it's not as it's simple to say, don't judge or bring that aspect of you closer or get to know that, that place where you are, where you have that hole, where you have that void within you get to know that. It's easy to say, but it's not easy to do because no one wants to look at the skeletons in their closet. No one wants to look at the monster under the bed or what they deem to be the monster under the bed. And certainly no one wants to befriend it because it's the monster. <laughs> so, so it's really, it's a very powerful time now to look at those places and to, instead of seeking to Instead of seeking to cobble together a solution based on our 3D perspective, based on the mind and the ego, we need to start looking for solutions from a fifth dimensional heart-centered perspective, from a perspective that is not tainted by the the polarity that transcends the polarity that we have been taught is our reality because our reality is not this world of duality. We came down here, my star seeds, my star seed brothers and sisters, we came down here to learn how to master our energy in this world of duality, of polarity, because that is the only way that we can learn how to master our energy by being in this dense physical reality where everything is black, white, and it's, you know, up, down, everything is in twos, but it is about bringing them into union. And today is the Shabbat. And what do we do on the Shabbat? We bring duality into union. We unite with the Shekhinah. We welcome her back, the Holy Spirit, the divine feminine presence, that aspect that unites us with God, goddess, Allah. 
we bring that back into our heart space and we allow her to inspire and flow through us. This is this is this moon. This lunation. This lunation is is powerful. We are seeding what we wish our world to be in this moment. In every moment, we are seeding our reality. We are seeding our reality with our words, with our thoughts, with our actions. We are creating every moment. And with this new moon, we're going into a new lunar cycle. And this is the month of, I believe it's Heshvan. Heshvan. I might not be pronouncing that right. But it is the month of suffering. (laughs) Which I'm laughing because I don't want that frequency. Like I I want to lighten that frequency for us. It is it is a very tough month. It's a month of a lunar cycle that is about trials and tribulations. It is, you know, the the month of Scorpio. Scorpio is very deep. Very deep. I mean, granted, it's not the solar portal of Scorpio. This is the lunar portal of Scorpio. But it's the frequency is there and the frequency begins tomorrow. Some of you may have already felt it. I already feel it. So Scorpio is ruled by Mars and Pluto. And in biblical astrology, it was Mars because Mars was one of the... Pluto was still not known by the ancients. So Mars, as I mentioned a little bit before, Mars is either in the shadow, it's the ego, it's the individualistic all for the, the, that person's gain or that being's gain. But in the light, in the higher octave, it is the spiritual warrior, the one that fights for the light, the one that anchors in and brings down that light of creation that, that is, and it's not a self-serving egoic energy. Pluto, Pluto is the planet of death, rebirth, resurrection, and as I said, that two, 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 two <laughs> was that uh, was the numbers. So again, we are witnessing the death of old patterns and old ways of being with this with this cycle that we're going into. The month of Libra, Tishrei, was the month of bringing down the light, the law of the light, the law of Nuhra. Now we're basically being faced with the challenges to see, can we hold this light of creation even amidst challenging circumstances? And we can. We've done this before. This isn't our first rodeo, Starseeds. We've done this before. We've already completed this mission. This, our purpose has already been fulfilled. We have ascended, we have transformed and transmuted all of these dense energies. We live in that world of peace, of harmony, of abundance, of beauty, of joy. We live in that reality. In our hearts, we live in that reality. That reality begins with gratitude. Gratitude for every aspect of our being. And gratitude for those parts of ourselves that we don't quite know what to do with. Gratitude for those challenges. Knowing that those challenges are what has birthed our reality. They are what has manifested this physical world. Our current experience. And we are grateful for that. Because it's in this moment that we can transform. And if we had not had those lessons, we would not be ready to transform and transmute and alchemize and master our energy. Because when we can master our frequency and not be dissuaded, disillusioned, disheartened by what we see on the external, remember, 
What is external has been created by the past circumstances, by the collective actions of, of us, basically. We can't do anything about our past actions. It's in the past. But you can shift in this moment. In this moment, we can choose to love one another, choose to create harmony, choose to to disavow this bullshit that we're seeing. We can choose to embody our creation. We are creators. We can take the reins of our creative power. The month of Scorpio. Scorpio is all about sex too. So this is about purifying our sexual energy. Why are, why purifying our sexual energy? Because our sexual energy is what creates worlds. It is, it is either being utilized by Lilith, which is the demon. And she's not just the demon, according to biblical scripture that eats the heads of babies. (laughs) So it's, She's not just a demon in biblical scripture. Lilith is an energy that feeds off of the blood of humanity. It controls and manipulates humanity in the lower octave. So when we are completely unconscious and unaware of our creative power and not harnessing and purifying and channeling our creative power, our sexual energy, then Lilith is running amok and creating disharmony and disunity and control and manipulation and fear, all of that. Lilith is a demon in far older than the Bible, Old Testament, far, far older. She is Canaanite. She is Sumerian. She is Mesopotamian. They've been talking about that bitch for ages. <laughs> so it's not, it's not a frequency that I wish to feed. I don't know about you, but I'm assuming you don't want to feed frequencies of disharmony, disunity, destruction, chaos. Like that's not creation. Creation is channeling your power, knowing that you have that power standing in your sovereignty. And to be sovereign is to know that you are whole and complete. That is also the meaning of the word shalom. Shalom, shlama. Whether it's Aramaic or Hebrew, that means oneness. That means unity. We are all in this together. We are all one like we are all mirrors of one another. We are all aspects of the divine. We are fragments of the divine having individual experiences so that the divine can know itself better. We are creation creating infinitely. Are we using our power for good or are we allowing it to be used on our behalf to create a reality that we do not wish to birth. It's up to us. It's up to us. It is up to us. This is a powerful time for seeding what it is that you truly wish to live. Your experience, your light, embodying it, purifying our sexual energy, releasing whatever karmas, traumas, limiting beliefs, all of it. And I don't necessarily like to use the word release because lease means you enter into a contract. Re, you do it again. (laughs) So let me correct myself. It is time to shed and let go of karmas, traumas, limiting beliefs, karmic cycles, patterns, all of that nonsense, all of it that has been holding you back, keeping you small, keeping you contained, keeping you feeling lost, desolate, isolated. It is time to let go of it. It is time. 
because we're moving into a new phase and either we collectively feed the demon that has been oppressing and suppressing us or we laugh at it and we tell it to go fuck off and we take control of our power and consciously choose to live the reality to manifest and birth into this physical world the peace the love the abundance the beauty the joy the prosperity the wisdom the discernment the clarity the focus all of those the wisdom or we birth those one of the the aramaic letters that deals with this month is that created scorpio is the noon the noon is the it's the fish it is the letter that represents yeshua it is the frequency of the divine feminine codes so it's the water and from the water the water is feminine so it represents the divine feminine codes the wisdom codes during this month we have the ability to go into our waters to purify them and to activate these codes these codes of creation because the divine feminine is a creative force she is constantly birthing and creating this is what we do and particularly as mothers as women we we are the ones that birth worlds more so than men why because we hold masculine and feminine within us we can birth both types of beings we can birth we can birth beings period we are very powerful are we utilizing that power for the light are we allowing that power to be manipulated and distorted and used by the powers that were the minuscule little bastards that are still thinking they run shit It's about awakening. It's about us. It's about each and every one of us stepping into our light, stepping into our power, embodying our light and radiating it into the world, being that light for those around us to see what is possible. And being mindful, we are here to master our energy. What are you giving your energy to? What are you feeding? Are you feeding a distorted version of reality? I know many of us still are in some way shape or form. So how do we snip that cord? Trim back those branches that we do not wish to continue perpetuating propagating we don't want that so now more than ever it's the time to definitely regulate our nervous system do not be i really 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 caution you against watching these images watching anything that is violent at this time because all it does is feed that that darkness and we don't want to feed it we want to starve it we want to clamp that blood vessel that has been feeding that energy so that that energy shrivels up into dust and is transformed into another form of light. Take care of yourselves if you can be in meditation, in prayer, 
out in nature, connecting with the earth, do it. If you can take a salt bath, if that's the one thing you can do to kind of reset your nervous system with sea salt and magnesium, Epsom salts, essential oils, lavender, um, sage, doesn't have to be salvia piana. It could just be regular sage and rosemary. Rosemary is very, very powerful. But don't do the rosemary at night because that might, rosemary is very, it's, it's awakening to the mind. So lavender, sage, rose. Rose has a beautiful frequency. But definitely look at the sun. Sun gazing early morning, late afternoon. Put your feet on the bare earth. Go for a walk in nature. Listen to nature sounds. Like, go to a sound bath. Do yoga. Exercise. Run. Walk. Power walk. Whatever it is that you need to do to move the energy. Because you need to move it through your body and cleanse your body, purify your body, purify your energy field. And do this as many times as you need to, because now the veil is getting thinner. We're coming on to Samhain. The veil is getting thinner, which means we can see more. And it is incredibly important to purify our energy, purify our energy, pay attention to your thoughts, your words, pay attention to what you're doing, pay attention to what you are feeding. Because now is the time for a new beginning. Now is, this is a new lunation. This is a new cycle. We are seeding what we wish to experience. This is, this is our time. This is the time to manifest, to put down the roots of our light and to anchor them into the earth and to allow the grid lines, because that's the other reason this is happening, particularly the Middle East, Palestine, this area, it's a very powerful star portal. It's a very powerful earth portal. That's why so much blood is being, has been shed for millennia. It's the time for us light workers to send light and restore this stargate. Envision it filled with light. So if, if that's the other thing you can do, if you can visualize. So I'm visualizing dragon energies is I have a white and a gold dragon that that have come to me many times as well as a few others but I'm still getting to know the others so I'm sending those energies into the earth to heal the grids the star grids under the holy land I did this when I was at the tomb of Isabella and Ferdinand in Granada, oh God, and, and I'm getting, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm feeling the emotions of that because the amount of suffering, you want to talk about genocide? Inquisition, hello. That, and for me, because my bloodline comes from, I'm Spanish, but I'm also Peruvian, so I have the indigenous bloodline within me as well as the conquistador colonial bloodline as well and i have moorish blood as well sephardic so i'm <laughs> basically every every kind of person that's been colonized or persecuted ding 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 um and it's healing that healing that trauma within myself that these people caused because of their distorted view of power. You see how we come back to the same thing. It doesn't matter if it's Muslim, Judeo-Christian, Catholic, doesn't matter. 
you come back to the same thing. It is the distortion of power that brings, brings in the seed for war and chaos and genocide and suffering and death and bloodshed. And this is why we must stand in our light. This is why we must stand in our power. This is why we must anchor in our light. Because if we don't heal those, those warring aspects in yourself, and this was one in me, in my bloodline, in my physical DNA, if I didn't heal that within me by being there, feeling those emotions, feeling that the, it was really like an energy of, of like, like a dark energy around my solar plexus. Like I felt literally felt like throwing up. I felt very nauseous being in there. And what did I do? I prayed the Magdalene Rosary, the Rosary in Aramaic. And I walked around the tomb. I went down, stood in front of it, praying, and walked around it counterclockwise. Counterclockwise to release that trauma, that karma. So we are all doing our work. We are all doing whatever it is that we need to do to transform and transmute and alchemize whatever has created our reality. And it's what needs to be done now. This is not the time for more war, more separation, more disunity, more disharmony. This is not that time. Not unless we want to perpetuate what we've been perpetuating for the last 2,000 years plus. If we wish to anchor in the fifth dimensional light grid, we need to start with our heart. We need to start with unifying our, those aspects within ourselves, with coming into neutrality, with coming at everything from a heart-centered, open, loving space. May peace be with you. And up next will be the sound healing because this is definitely very needed right now. And this is, um, th this is going to be a sound healing. Yeah, I'm going to call in the Black Madonna for this one because we really need to bring in healing, healing into the earth, healing into our lineages, healing into our future lineages. We need healing. So the sound healing companion episode for this week's episode will be a black Madonna sound healing for healing. So sound activation for healing. Let me not be redundant. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you. Please subscribe, follow, give this a, <laughs> a thumbs up, comment, share it, please. I could always, I love seeing, um, how this, um, how many people this is reaching. And I hope that it continues to inspire and uplift and support us during these times, particularly because we need it at this point in time. We're going to need it. And I'm, I'm also going to recite the, um, the rosary in Aramaic during the sound healing. So enjoy and remember to please be in your heart center. Cultivate the peace within. Cultivate the higher aspect of your soul, because this is what we are here to do. This is what we are here to support and remind one another. This is our sole purpose. Thank you so much for listening. Ahava.